Okay, you guys, today we are talking about pruning multi-stem shrubs. Say that fast, like five times, but <laughs> anyways. So a multi-stem shrub is just that. It means there's multiple stems coming from the base of the ground that completes one shrub. There is like a single stem shrub where it grows from one trunk and then goes out. But today we're talking about multi-stem. So when you prune a multi-stem, you never want to take more than a third of the plant out. That's kind of a rule of thumb is thirds. So we're going to be pruning out a third of our plant today. And then when we're pruning them, we want to do what's called a renewal pruning. And this creates a shrub that it looks natural, the form looks natural. And we, by taking out canes from the base, we open up a canopy. We keep the, we can control the height of the shrub and create it, um, not create it, we can make it look natural. The ideal time to prune multi-stem shrubs is late winter, early spring. So like end of February, first of March, unless we're buried in snow. But that is not true for all because if you have a like a viburnum, a lilac, a forsythia, something that blooms in the spring, it has set its buds last year. So if we go in and prune it now, you won't get any blooms. So those type of things. So something that's gonna be blooming now, soon in the spring, don't prune until right after it's done blooming. Okay, so first up is your tool, your pruning tool that you're gonna choose. So the most important thing is when you're looking for a pruner, so these are different types. This is a hand pruner, this is a um, lopper. They are both what's called bypass pruners. And so if you watch my blade, when I open it up, it they go side by side, almost like a pair of scissors would. Um, and this helps cut the, whatever you're cutting, like your plant tissue. Um, there's something called an anvil pruner, and is what happens, it's got the blade, and the blade hits the bottom part of the blade, and it more like crushes, which I think it's better for dead wood that you'd use an anvil pruner, but I would say just skip those all together and just get bypass pruners because you can use bypass pruners for anything. So if you watch, you can see how the side-by-side -side bypass pruner would get a very clean cut of the plant tissue and it wouldn't crush it at all. So today, um, while I'm pruning my shrub, I'm gonna have a pair of hand pruners, a pair of loppers, because this is gonna give me more leverage, make me a little stronger than I actually am. I also have this little handsaw, um, and I might end up having to use this for some of the larger branches. And if you're like me and your husband maybe isn't around all the time, sometimes you need a little power. So this is a sawzall and I love to use this when pruning large branches. Should I turn it on? Because I feel like you need to see the power in this. <laughs> so today we are going to prune, this is called a red twig dogwood. It's multi-stem, so if you look down at the base of the plant, you can see multi-stems or what form the shrub. Um, you can see it's also gotten way tall and a lot of people want to come in when they have a shrub that's like this and they're like, you know, I only want this shrub, let's say they want it five feet tall. They want it as tall as me. It's way too tall and they're going to come in and they just like cut everything off. They come in and they cut wherever they want. And what happens is your bush will just go crazy at the top. You'll get a really bushy top and then you'll be have like a thin spindly bottom. And that's not what we want. We want our bush to look very natural and control the size at the same time. So today we're going to come in and I'm going to help bring down the size of this shrub and um, keep it looking natural. I'm gonna come in and remove the oldest canes. That's the best way to control the size. So a cane is just the branch that comes directly from the ground, so it's your stem. Um, the way to determine which the oldest canes are are your largest ones. The older the cane, the larger it gets. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna look through, I'm gonna find my largest cane and remove those first. I am gonna start with these loppers. Now I might need a little more muscle, so I might cheat and grab my sawzall. So I come in, I'm gonna come down to the base of my plant, and I'm gonna cut this as close to the ground as I possibly can. So, because I don't think I have the muscle to get this branch out with my loppers, I'm gonna get my sawzall. So bear with me for a second. Okay, so I took that down. I tried to do like a 45 degree angle with my saw, like a cut, so that we don't get disease there. But it's what happens with these multi-stem plants is that like we take out the old canes and if you look closely in here, you can see these really skinny small canes starting to grow. And these are what have um, grown like when I pruned last year. These are what um, came up. So you can see we've got fresh new growth that's shorter and we're taking out the oldest, tallest growth. 
So I'm just gonna continue on. Sometimes you gotta stand back and look at it. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna take this big guy out right here. Um, and again, I'm gonna use my Sawzall for this. Oh, getting attacked. in to take that out all right so the rule of thumb to remember when pruning is you don't want to take more than a third of the plant out um, there are always exceptions to the rules and lucky if you for you if you have a red twig dogwood they actually can be pruned a ton and recover so you don't have to be too careful mine because mine is so big and so overgrown I might take more than a third out today but don't tell anybody <laughs> So I'm just gonna continue on pruning. Um, once I've got the canes removed that I think that I am you know, done with, then I can go in and I can do directional pruning if I would like to. And I will talk a little bit about that. So let me just take out like a couple more branches then I'll show some directional pruning. I'm done with all of my renewal cuts. I have brought the the height of the plant way down. I have opened up the canopy a ton. So now if you look in here, you can see all these little shoots. These are from like last year that grew. So all these little shoots are gonna come up and they're gonna create my new form of my shrub. So now we have a natural looking shrub instead of cutting the top off to, re to control the height. So, but if I do want to come in, let me grab my hand pruners. <coughs> So if I do want to come in and I'm like, oh, there's still some crossing branches, there's some really tall um, canes still that I don't love, is what I can do is I can come in and do some directional pruning. So I'm going to take care of crossing branches first. So the next thing I do is I'm going to take care of anything crossing. Crossing branches creates friction, they rub against each other, um, and we don't want that. So we're going to clean up this. Um, inside canopy even a little bit more. So for instance, I'm going to remove this stem right here and I'm going to follow it back to another branch that is growing straight up and that is where I'm going to make my cut. And I'm 45 degree angle and once like I make these cuts, like right now you can kind of see where I've, I've cut, but once these leaf out, oh my gosh, you will not even be able to tell where you've made your directional cuts. So I've got a little branch that's going this way and so this is gonna grow out from the canopy. So that's a great place to make a directional cut. <laughs> I hope you could see that. <laughs> and is what's gonna happen as this plant grows this summer, you are not gonna even be able to see where I've made these directional cuts and you'll get fresh new growth, you'll have plenty of leaves. And then I'm also gonna go through, I don't know if you can see here, I've got a dead branch. So I'm gonna go through and any dead, I'm gonna just cut off too. Just clean it up. The thing that's really cool about red twig dogwoods, they're super easy to root yourself. And they also, if you let your branches fall down and lay and they get covered up by soil and whatever, they will reroot and start a new a new plant. So they can kind of travel a little bit. So if you don't want them traveling, just be sure to keep your form upright. Okay, then I'm just gonna continue on. So as you can see, pruning super fun and you might get a little prune happy, but <laughs> the things to remember are you want to prune late winter, early spring, if your plant isn't an early flower. So viburnum, forsythia, um, lilac, those should all be pruned like right when they're done blooming. But otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna bloom, or bloom, you're gonna prune in this time of year. Um, the next thing is rule of thirds. So you wanna like try to just take no more than a third of the plant. Um, that can be height and canes. So start first with renewal cutting. So take out your oldest canes and then you can go in and do your directional cutting to, if you still need a little bit of height 
and for like crossing branches. I hope this video is helpful and that you can go out in your yard and conquer your pruning. Happy pruning!